we will have uh, a talk more about the higher level uh, on, on how to think APIs uh, with uh, Ben uh, van der Steen, uh, who is technical architect at the Government Digital Service at the Cabinet Office, and uh, who will uh, talk with us about APIs for senior stakeholders, right? A lot of people have talked about that yesterday. How do we manage the senior stakeholders, the sponsors, uh, the, the, the managers, and how to onboard them and involve them into APIs and API programs? So we will talk about that. Hello, Ben. How are you? Hi, Mehdi. Very well, thank you. Yeah, really, really good. And um, yeah, really happy to be here. So uh, so thanks, everyone, today. Yeah, um, am, I, am I set to go then? Yeah, you're set to go. Sounds good. Good stuff. Cool. Yeah, well, thanks for coming, everyone. Um, and thanks to Laura for a really cool presentation there. Really interesting stuff. Um, I'm Ben van der Steen. I'm um, a technical architect at the Cabinet Office. Um, the Government Digital Service, which is part of the Cabinet Office, and I sit on a team called GBS International. Um, so, previous to, to being a technical architect, I was a developer for about 10 years. Um, I joined uh, government from the private sector about five years ago now, um, and I've worked on a number of services for the UK government, um, digital marketplace, uh, global digital marketplace, uh, the vulnerable people service, which went live to support those vulnerable persons affected by uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and now I'm working on GDS International. I'm going to start this presentation with a couple of shout outs. Um, first one is to a chap called Michael Plot. He um, made a YouTube video, which I think is really underrated, called Pitching DDD to the manage domain driven design to the management and uh and that was a, a bit of an inspiration for this video um that video it sort of examines what happens at the boundaries of teams within an organization um that's something i found really interesting so check that out and um the uk government api and data exchange community of practice um those are the people that first got in touch with me and asked me to give a talk about what i'm what I'm presenting to you today. So uh, uh, if you're interested in that sort of thing, then uh, then look them up. They do talks, not just for government, but also um, wider public sector. And they're all about data exchange and APIs and, and all that kind of stuff. Cool, so APIs for senior stakeholders. Um, defining senior, you know, my work with with GDS International puts me into touch with everyone from junior devs to sort of C level senior people in an organisation. Um, the way that government um, engagements work generally is that sort of ministerial or deputy ministerial level will um, set out some sort of outcomes that they expect for an engagement. So these engagements are discussed at a very high level. For example, um, we're currently working on a project project with um, the Cyprus government. That started with the deputy minister getting in touch with um, someone see at ministerial level at the cabinet office or at DD level at the cabinet office. And um, they worked out the work that they wanted to do together and you know i now work with with software developers and um a multidisciplinary team in cyprus but generally these engagements happen at a very high level um what that means is you know when i work with the developers they often see the benefits of apis and um you know they want to do microservices we want to um have micro front ends and and share data across departments. We, we don't want to be coding up report after report after report, tweaking, you know, Excel outputs and all this kind of stuff. The techies kind of all agree that sharing data and APIs and all that kind of stuff is a good thing. Um, but what we need to do is to get senior stakeholders to back these, um, often unseen kind of 
abstracted away systems that that they don't generally see as you know impacting user engagement or um, as important things to the, the mission critical part of their organization ministry business whatever it is um, so so there's a very you know talking to talking to techies about apis and talking to senior stakeholders about apis it, 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 they're, they're different things um, so on that i mean th this is what i call an evolutionary dead end if you go to senior stakeholders like c level like ministers like all of that kind of you know those those top decision makers and you go at them with a tech point of view you're You'll, you'll be dead in the water. They, for a start, they don't see the value unless you're linking it directly to, you know, in the case of, of the public sector, it's, it's what do the citizens get out of this? You know, are, are the citizens going to turn around and go, I had a, a quality experience with this government thing and it, it, like, it was really good. Um, for, for, for an organization, they're going to be like, well, uh, for a business, they're going to be like, well, how, how does this kind of drive our, our business dif differentiators? Are we, um, are, are you, how are users like finding our product awesome just because we're, we're sharing data in the background, you know? Um, particularly, you know, what I've seen a lot of is people going there with, oh, we're going to have, food, you know, five nines uptime, cloud API gateway, um, JSON APIs, fully REST, Swagger documentation, coders, coders docs, like all of this kind of thing. As technologists, all of those things are our problems, but they're not the senior stakeholders' problems, right? Making sure an API is up is, is a technological implementation concern, and they, they would just expect you to be doing that as part of your job. So, so what what I what I generally say, I mean, this works in, in a lot of engagements, like international engagements in my work, you know. Try and try and understand the person that you're talking to. As a as as a UK public sector employee, I have quite a lot of freedom to um, to just try to help people, right? But you, you you have to come at it from the right angle because if if the senior management or the senior stakeholders don't see why what you're saying is is, is going to help them and what they're going to get out of it, then they won't let you help. They've got a million and one other things that need to be done. So yeah, try to try to empathize with 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 who you're you're talking to. What are their problems? What do they want out of this? And so some of the things that I've seen um, senior stakeholders really interested in at the moment are things like uh, data governance. They have an enormous organization. They have data all over the place. They don't know who is allowed access to their data. They don't really know, you know what the data flows within their organization look like. Well, APIs can help with that. You can put in a governance layer like that is integrated into an API management platform or even just a, 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 a set of APIs, right? So tell them that you're going to help them with their, their data governance problem. Tell them that uh, it's going to simplify things. It will be more visible for them that um, they can set rules in one place and that they don't have to have governance boards and, and massive kind of um processes that dictate who can ask for what from whom you know you you can enforce that at the at the boundary of the team or at the boundary of, of where that data lives in an api um another thing senior stakeholders are really concerned about the capability to support legacy systems again as a technologist it's it's so it's super easy to to walk in and say wow this is a 15 year old stack you should burn it to the ground get rid of it replace it's never it's it's never going to be good for you. 
some of these systems are still bringing in money 15 years later. You know, banking back ends, insurance industry back ends. It's not as simple as walking in and saying, rewrite. So you've got to see it from their perspective. This is a valuable system. And you're telling them to throw it away. You haven't understood what they're talking about at all. So tell them that, right, you, we know it's getting harder to, to find the capability in the private sector to come in and help with these legacy systems, right? Let's say we put an API in front of that. We can, we can maybe work through some of this. And then, you know, you can keep the, the capability that you've got working on the legacy system, but then you can have newer skills working on an API abstraction layer that helps integrate with that valuable system. Um, our cloud transformation is being hampered by existing systems. We really want to go to cloud and, and um, you know, <clears throat> we've got all these systems, we don't know how to migrate, we, all of this kind of stuff. Or, or um, uh, we've got data and we are, we, we have to keep that data in a certain data center. It's part of policy, it's legal, it's this, it's that. This is a really common in the public sector, right? So I talk to, uh, to governments all over the world and the first thing that they say is, well, you're putting citizen data in cloud? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Well, they're like, we can't do that. It's in our law that we have to have sovereignty of our data. And this isn't just for, for public sector, you know, banking regulations in the, in the insurance industry regulations exist on exactly the same sort of subjects. So what can you do? You know, okay, make an API that means that you can deploy services to cloud, but then interface with your data that's held on whatever premises it needs to be held on, right? Hybrid cloud facilitated by APIs. We're having trouble attracting talent. Again, this kind of goes back to that legacy problem of um, uh, how we can't find the right people or, or the right people aren't coming to us. You know, this is another way of modernizing your stack without necessarily doing a big bang replacement. Um, yeah, another thing a lot of senior leaders uh, are asking about these days is org design and, um, you know, agile and all this kind of stuff, right? So, so tell them, you can facilitate these, these teams that are agile and independent and, and can go their own way and can, can um, pivot when they change their ideas. Um, but you can only do that if they're not all beholden to each other, right? So self-serve the operations of a single team using APIs, right, as an abstraction. Don't have those teams communicating directly. And all of a sudden you release them and, and give them this freedom to, to experiment. Um, communication is too complex. It's really similar to the previous point, but Again, like allow people to self-serve data with APIs and try and grow that um, capability within your organization, right? If you've got, the, in every organization, there's someone that's automated a lot of stuff with Excel. There's, um, you know, someone who's got a Microsoft Access database that they invented because they needed to keep track of some data. These people are, with a little bit of investment, capable of, calling an API to get some data to create a report. And all of a sudden, you've broken the connection between a load of really interconnected teams. Our service is not you joined up. Users don't like that, right? So play on play on fears, right, <laughs> a bit, um, as mean as that sounds. You can make your, your estate more joined up by connecting everyone with APIs, right? There's no excuse in this day and age for, um, you know, an, an orders website to not um, integrate with the returns case management system when you, when you place an order and want to return something online, right? Those things need to be connected. And if you have separate teams handling those, make sure they have an API to communicate. That's a way of drawing up your service. That the, the effect of that is that 
you know, oh, I ordered something, but it's really easy to return it. I can track where my returns label is. I can do all this. I really like that experience as a user. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. And then, and then, so again, this kind of goes along with the agile point, but a lot of senior leaders are talking about DevOps and CICD and, and all of this, like anything possibility there, you know. Well, what you're going to need to do if you if you want to have a real like DevOpsy agile iterative development environment again is to not have these teams hamstrung by the communication with other parts of the organisation. So again, create that API layer, create that way for people to self serve data, and you'll be better off. Cool. And there's a, there's a few other things you can lean on for this, which, which work quite well. Um, the Accelerate book by um, Nicole Forsgren, Jez Hollandball, Jim Kim, um, you know, a loosely coupled, well-encapsulated architecture with an organizational structure to match is a high, in, a high indicator of uh, continuous delivery performance and the ability to scale performance linearly. Well, tell them that, and tell them that the way that you achieve that loose coupling is with APIs and you've got a senior leader on board. Um, another thing a lot of senior leaderships have, have referenced recently is um, Wardley mapping and pioneers, settlers, town planners, all these ideas and um, uh, commoditizing your parts of your systems, right? If they're into that, APIs can help. Um, what else is there? Yeah. Another thing that can help, the Jeff Bezos API manifesto, if they're the sort of senior leader that likes to think of themselves as a bit of a Jeff, um, you can show them this and uh, maybe, that will, maybe that will help with your kind of quest to, to do APIs and, and quest to work on these teams that are, that are agile and, and kind of freed up a bit. So yeah, so um, those would be my points really. Emphasize first. Make sure you're addressing their issues and not the tech issues that, that you you would have to deal with as a technologist. And yeah, use the science, use the numbers, um, do your research, find out what um, find out what they're into, but but and then find out kind of how that is treated in the Twitter sphere or, or online or in blogs or in Gartner reports or, or what have you. There's a there's a lot of a, a lot of stuff out there. Cool. Um, so that's like the meat of of the presentation. I just wanted to share quickly a couple of um, points about getting involved with data in government. Um, I mentioned the um, the API and data community. That's managed by the UK Data Standards Authority. Um, this is a whole team of people that sit in um, cabinet office and are interested in open standards, um, opening up data, how to publish data, APIs, all of that stuff. Um, and they do, um, yeah, so this, this is open standards for government. These are mandated uh, for any government department or public sector organization collecting a given type of information. So if you wanna collect where all your street lamps are located as a local authority, you have to use um, this standard. So there is a lot of work going on making sure people are using data standards in government. Uh, you can join the API community of practice. Um, there's the blog there if you just search GovUK API community, that'll come up. And there's also an annual conference um, just been, unfortunately, but Data Connect 21 was really successful. Um, and yeah, that's a good place to hear about what's going on in government. And uh, of course, we're, we're hiring. So um, yeah, this is civil service job sites. Um, we've got some really interesting roles, particularly in the Data Standards Authority and its sort of overarching um, organization, which is the CDDO, Central Digital and Data Office. So, yeah, um, that's me. I'm Ben Van Steen. Thanks very much um, for listening. I have to take questions. 
And if you want to reach out, I'm happy to connect as well. So, um, yeah, don't be shy. Yeah, thank you very much, Ben. Uh, thank you for this uh, discussion, this live uh, discussion and, de and debate about, about the topic. Let's say what has been uh, today the one of the arguments that you have the most difficulties to 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 argue with, you know, with the senior stakeholders. The most difficult arguments. Um, yeah, that's that's a really really it's a tricky one, right? I think probably some of the most interesting arguments that I I come across and this is particularly true for the public sector but I think is is also very relevant for um, for the private sector organizations as well the the incentives of different teams of different departments of different government organizations may very well be misaligned So at that point, you have an organizational problem. And what, I'm, what I kind of mean by that is that, let's say, um, let's, let's take that shopping, shopping example before, right? The returns, the returns team may be incentivized in a performance framework that says you need to, um, you need to process a given amount of returns, right? And the sales team is probably incentivized by the amount of money that they bring in. So those two teams building APIs that interface, right, that overall will create a better user experience, will drive user engagement, will create more money coming through the platform, right? Those, those, that, those incentives that they operate under are not aligned to doing that piece of work, right? And we see this all the time, you know, part of an organization gets their budget settlement from under certain terms. And that means that they're disincentivized to work with other parts of the organization. So a lot of what I try to understand when I first start working with um, a partner government or, or another organization or even a, um, even a business is How are they incentivizing their teams and, and how does that play within the organization? And once you've done that, you can maybe find something that both of the senior leaderships in, in the departments you're trying to connect, something they both want. But you have to understand how they're connected. So those are the really interesting problems I quite like dealing with. Yeah, I agree. That's a, that's an interesting argument. We reached our time today, Ben. Thank you for so the call for participation and the call for hiring.